Okay, so I'm going to pick up straight from where we were previously, and we're going to jump into the radial impulse today. Now, to do this, again, if you haven't already got this open, just open the character class, as all of this logic will be happening pretty much where it was in the previous video. We do need a couple of extra variables, so if we go back over to the header file first of all, uh, again, I'm going to add another comment here just to section this off as the radial impulse section, but we'll be adding this in the protected section of our script again. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is kind of account for this and make it a bit more flexible. So we're going to add a boolean, which we'll call b apply radial force. Just going to give this the u property of edit anywhere. We're going to be using that quite a lot because, again, all of this will be done in C++, but I do want the option in the character class to very quickly come in and toggle these on and off and change the variables. So this is just going to allow us to keep the other functionalities working. Um, if you wanted to add this to like different weapons and things, maybe some weapons like a, a grenade or rocket launcher or something will always have the radial force applied but others won't need it so we can easily then turn this on and off. Uh, the next thing I want to add is the impact radius so how wide a radius this will cover. So this will be our float impact radius. Again we're just going to drop the U property on top of that as well and the final variable that we need is the force in which we're going to apply this. So similar to the impulse force but we're going to call this one the impact force so float impact force decided to call that radial impact force as well just so that that's a little bit more distinct and we can tell exactly what that is when we look back through this uh, and that should be pretty much everything that we need for our radial impulse although we will be working with a for loop so we're going to need a list of our hit actors as well so this is going to be tra of actor type called hit actors okay so if those done if we go back over to the character base so i'm going to start this time by working top down so if we do the constructor first and make sure that we have all of the variables assigned with at least a default value so for testing purposes we'll make the radial force boolean automatically default to true we'll make the impact radius something fairly small like 200 that should be a sphere that roughly encapsulates the all of the cubes that we've placed at the moment and then we'll make the radial impact force around about 2000 should be fine. Okay, so if that done, if we navigate back down to the fire forward function, this is again where we're going to be adding all of the logic for any of our impulse stuff. We can do this inside of the current if uh, be hit check so that we know again that we've got something successfully hit, but outside of the root component check for the movable. And if that's the case, if we've hit something, what we want to do is we want to do a sweep check to find everything in the radius that we have that is movable and then apply a radial force to that. So if we create a boolean first of all, and this is where we're going to do our sweep check is inside of our boolean, which we're going to be using kind of a bit later on like we did, kind of like the B hit. So this one we're going to call B sweep hit. And to assign this, we're going to get our world again. So like we've done in the past, we want to call a function on this, which is sweep multi by channel. And there's a few things that we want to pass into this. So like we've done in the previous video, I'm just going to go back up, take a step back and assign the variables. But I just want to do it this way so that we can actually see why we're creating these variables uh, and what they are. So they're all again going to be part of the arguments that we have here. So if we see what the first one that this function wants is. So the first thing is it's actually going to want an array of our hit results. Uh, and we, I think I already had something ready for this, but... Uh, I think we incorrectly, or I incorrectly, set this to be an actor, and we want this to be hit results rather than actors. So if we change this to f hit result, then we already have our array of hit actors ready, so that can be the first thing that we pass in. And we just need to make sure that we remove the pointer here, otherwise we're going to get an error when we come back in and use it. Okay, so the next argument that this needs is the start location now this is the first part where this gets a little bit quirky and i think this is something which has happened in recent updates to the unreal engine so what you used to be able to do is the next thing as well is it's going to want the end location now for a shape what you used to be able to do is provide the same start and end location because of course if you're creating a debug cube or a debug sphere uh, if you give an end offset then you're going to end up with something like a capsule if you give it a completely different start and end location for a sphere trace because it's going to create one sphere at 100 units and then another sphere at say 300 units so there's going to be a gap in between that which will make it kind of like a capsule trace uh, so obviously passing in the same value for the start and the end was fine however 
recent changes seem to have been made where you have to have a slightly different start and end location. So what we're going to do is for the start location, we're going to use our hit dot location. And then that's going to be where the impact starts. So wherever we fire is going to be the start of our sphere trace or our sphere sweep. And then we want our end location. So rather than making something completely, like I said, um, two very different variables, which would create something more like a cylinder or capsule trace, what we're going to do is we're going to say hit dot location again. And then we're just going to add a vector to the, a new vector to this. So we're going to say plus F vector. And we're going to make this really small. So we're going to say plus 0 0.01 or something. And that's it. We'll just close that off. So now we're getting the pretty much the same location. For the most part, it's just going to be a normal sphere. Uh, visually, it won't really be any different. But I just wanted to make a point of this because if you ever try and do this and you don't add a different end location, like I mentioned, it didn't used to be a problem. So a lot of tutorials will still have the start and the end being exactly the same. And what you get is just nothing gets traced at all. And it just doesn't actually do these sweep checks. And that's why. So if you ever do this and you're doing a shape trace or shape sweep, and for some reason you find that you're not getting any results, you're not finding any collisions when you know you should be, it's because they've this change has probably done something to mess with the logic. So just, like I said, just wanted to make a kind of a big point of that. So we can now move on. The next thing it wants is the rotation. This is quite simple. We're going to give it the uh, default rotation of uh, nothing. So it's a quaternion identity. Next is the collision channel. So we're going to leave this on the collision channel of world static. And I'm just going to drop this down so that we can see this a little bit better. The final thing that we want is our collision shape. So like I keep mentioning, this is a shape sweep or a shape trace. Uh, and the shape that we're looking obviously is the sphere. So we don't actually have one of these yet. So what we're going to do is just above our Boolean, we can store a variable. Um, we'll call this the F collision shape or it is of type F collision shape. We'll call this sphere call. And this is, and to create this, we say equals F collision shape. Uh, we'll make sphere and it just wants one argument, which is the sphere radius. And of course, we've got our impact radius already created. So we'll just use that variable, close that off, and then we can pass this into the final argument and that is our radial sweep or sphere sweep ready to go now what i like to do as well especially on things like this is that will work that's perfectly fine but i just like to visualize this as well so that when we play this we can actually see the radius of effect um, makes it easier for us to update things if we want to make it bigger smaller uh, we can get an exact idea of how big our impulse is or our radius is so what we're going to do we've done this previously so i won't go too de detailed into this so we're just going to draw a debug sphere. Obviously it needs to be in the current world, so get world. The location is the first thing we want to just give it the hit dot location. So again, same location. The impact radius will be the size of it, so we can reuse that. The segments, we can just give this 50 segments. That should be enough to make it not too detailed, not too expensive. Color it orange. We don't want this to be persistent, so we'll say false here. And we want it to exist for around about two seconds, should be fine. So we've got our debug sphere. The final things we want to do is want to check if the sweep hit, so like we've done in the past with the standard hit, we're just going to do this again with the sweep hit though. I'm going to do a simple for loop. So we're going to say for auto ampersand hit all of the hit actors that we found by passing it into our sweep multi-channel here. Okay, so for all of our hit actors, we want to do something similar to what we've done up here. We want to find out if we have a mesh component so we can pretty much just copy this. So if we've got a mesh component on the hit actors, we're going to say if mesh comp, then this time we want to apply a radial impulse. Okay, so for this, we're just going to say uh, mesh comp add radial impulse. We want to start this at the hit dot location again. We're going to give it the impact radius. We'll add our impact force. And then we're going to give this the radial impulse fall off type of the constant. And again, we don't need to worry about changing the velocity, so we can just say false. And in fact, uh, we changed the name of this to be radial impact force, didn't we, to make a bit more sense? Just make sure that you type that in correctly. With that done, that is the radial stuff finished. So we can compile this. And again, we can go back and check that this is all working. OK, so that's all compiled successfully. If we head back on over to the engine, just double check that this is all updated in the character class so that we have our radial force boolean and the variables already filled, so that's perfect. We can hit play, we can come in. Uh, if we fire over here, we should see 
if it's in range, we are getting our spheres. And then if we hit something which has physics, we can see all of these should be getting force applied, but it's only happening to the ones I'm hitting directly. So maybe that's just a bit weak. Uh, maybe if we make this a bit bigger. Uh, in fact, the size of it shouldn't really matter. Um, that isn't working, so we'll go back to the code and find out why. Okay, so what it was, uh, for some reason, although for the standard impulse, we're able to keep the uh, extra argument, the velocity change to false, or at least I thought it defaults to false, maybe it defaults to true. Uh, we do need to make sure that what, what we did here was we set this to be false. We need to make sure that we set the update velocity to be true here. Now I thought that only needed to be taken into account if you're affecting something that's already moving, um, but apparently that will need to be true here as well. Uh, with that changed and compiled though, if we go back over, I've already tested just to make sure we didn't waste too much time, but this now all works. So we can hit these lovely cubes and they will fly around everywhere. So that is all working. Um, and that is our radial impulse affected. Now, just to demonstrate a little bit more what I meant earlier, I'm gonna come back in. I'm gonna quickly remove the offset that we added to our hit location here. Um, and like I said, this is the thing which I think is a recent change to the engine. I've not seen any, any documentation saying why this has happened um, or if it's going to stay, but I just want to show the kind of thing, the results, the fact you don't get anything happening differently. So it can take a little while to debug if you're not familiar with this. So I really want to make sure that if you ever encounter this, you know what you're looking at and how to fix it. Okay, so again, this all compiled correctly. I'm just going to make one quick update back in the engine. So if we go back over now, same thing again. You can see that we're getting the debug and everything. So we know that all of the force is being applied in that area exactly the same things are happening. We know where it is, we know what the force is, uh, we know what we're getting, should be getting all of these returning a true hit value, uh, but it's just not happening, simply because I removed that offset. So like I said, you can't have the exact same start and end location in the current sweep hit uh, shape traces. Okay, so there's one final thing that we want to do. Remember that we had our boolean for whether we want to apply the radial force or not. We want to make sure that that is accounted for. So we'll do an if check here. And we're just going to drop everything into that if check. So that gives us the ability when we toggle this on and off the player character, uh, we can make sure that we will either allow or disallow this to happen based on that Boolean check. So with all of that working now, I'll leave that video here for today. As always, if you enjoy the videos or find them useful, please do leave a like and share the video around. That always helps. And of course, don't forget to hit the subscribe button to be kept up to date with any of the content coming from any of the playlists on the channel. And as ever, thanks for watching, and I will see you all next time.